to another episode of New England Beer Buddies with Mark and Garrett. We're starting a, a new type of segment here. Uh, we're doing some some German beers, um, kind of departing from the porters for a bit. Um, this kind of series won't be a competition, but but it probably will be a bit of a mini series, and we're just going to kind of have some really really good um, German style beers and and share our thoughts on them. Um, so. I've got a couple today on the lighter, lighter side. Um, so right now I have a, no, these are both by Schilling, uh, which is in Littleton, New Hampshire, the Schilling Beer Company. Um, and we have the Norderter. I apologize if I'm butchering names, but it's a Northern style, uh, German style Pilsner, as well as uh, Paulus, which is a Munich style Helles. Um, so we're... Schilling seems to do uh, quite a bit of European style beers, I believe. Um, I know I also saw a Czech Pilsner uh, while shopping for these, so I figured if that's kind of their specialty, that that maybe we'd give a couple a uh, couple of them a try. So um, I guess we'll start off with the with the Norder, sorry Norderter, uh, the the Pilsner. Um, so these are both going to be a bit uh, lighter, of course. Uh, Kind of as we move into spring, I know we're filming this in, in February, you won't see it for a while, um, but as we move in that direction, um, definitely, you know, becomes time for a, a little bit of some, some lighter lighter beers, but I, I still like the German style as well. I think it's a good, good cool weather beer that we'll, you know, that we'll get into. Um, so right off the bat, I guess I'll give a little bit more background info while we kind of give these a whirl, but... Um, this is like a mini history thing. Uh, I'm not great with beer history, but uh, Pilsner comes from Pilsen, which is a super old city that's been brewing beer since 1295 at the very least. Um, Pilsner itself became a thing sometime in the mid 1800s. Um, don't recall the specific brewer's name, but kind of you know made it iconic, I guess. Um, and there's a variety. Pilsners are pretty common I feel in, in terms of styles that we know uh, today even in in some more mass-produced beers you know there's a few varieties um, German Czech European and American being the four four kind of bigger categories there um, names you might recognize in those the Germans you'd have Bex and Warsteiner in the Czech you'd have Budweiser but not our Budweiser it's a very different Budweiser uh, but that is Czech uh, Pilsner or Kell and then in European, uh, Amstel and Heineken, people tend to be familiar with. Um, and they all they all kind of go from a, a more bitter earthy to, to sweeter kind of range as we go through here. Um, and then there's Americans, which I don't really know any hugely notable yeah. brands, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting part of Americans that I learned was that uh, in American Pilsners, they, they sometimes use corn or, or rice yep. uh, up to about 25 uh, percent yep. is, is kind of the the limit there so it's kind of the sweetest of the bunch yeah um so i guess with that uh, as you can see it's pretty pretty clear and, and bright and uh we'll give it a shot and let you know what we think yep prost prost <laughs> Yeah, it's very clean. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely uh, a little more on the on the bitter on the bitter side. Um, of course, being the the German style, it's kind of you know what mm -hmm. out of that spectrum I just gave you. What yeah. you know, kind of what we'd expect. Although not really that foamy. Uh, surprisingly, there's really. Yeah. Um, I know it was sitting for a little bit, but there's not. No, not, not a, a ton of uh, yeah, carbonation ton of, foaminess going on. Yeah, yeah. Generally, it's something you'd see more of. Um, yeah, it's also, I don't know if this may be different with it not being a draft and it being in a can, maybe that could be part of the mm. reason. Um, definitely, I think it has a very earthy type of smell to it, I would say. Um, all in all, it's still very good. It's got a good yeah. bite. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Got a good bite to it. Mm -hmm. um, definitely that bitterness comes through, but it's still, you know, very very drinkable very clean uh, yeah for sure yeah so these are going to lie somewhere 
I guess, you know, they're both right around 5% uh, ABV. Um, going to be fairly fairly standard for most of these. You're going to have lower ABVs than what mm-hmm. we've been doing with the porters. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely still flavorful beers for something for mm-hmm. something that's very very light and very very clear um, or fairly clear I guess yeah. there's a little little bit of haziness to it oh, but yeah. really I mean only in comparison to you know crappy beer that has no haze to it right whatsoever. exactly <laughs> yeah yeah it's very clear compared to um, yeah between a lot of the beers that you know we um, we've tasted I mean obviously we've been tasting mostly darker beers but this is definitely yeah, it's definitely even on the lower end of, of any degree of haziness. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think uh, I think it's a pretty solid choice mm-hmm. um, it, it, as far as the pilsners go. And I, you know, compare it's pilsners. I think can be a little a little tough. Not that we're grading, but to right. um, to, to have a, a, a great comparison or huge differentiation between some of these really clean yes. uh, clean styles you know it, you know if you compare this to it's certainly I mean I enjoy it more than you know a Bex or something like that yeah. of course but you're you're really not going to have uh, I think too many dramatic flavor profile differences yes. as much as a, a, a better just a just a difference in how well executed it is how well balanced it it yeah. maybe and, and and whether it's too bitter whether it's you know just right but I, I think they do a pretty yeah pretty solid job yeah I think it's it's the, the way to do with um, lagers and how they they tend to the yeast ferments at a lower temperature there tends to be it's not like in you know like something like an IPA where you have like a, you can have a whole lot of different flavors and you know there's a huge variance um, you know with with pilsners and stuff it's more um, like you said, there's, you know, it's, there's less variation. It's more about just kind of how well balanced and how, you know, crisp and like, you know, that sort of thing, as opposed to wildly different flavors. Absolutely. And, um, and, and I'd say one of the things that, that I would note here is definitely a solid plus is that, um, the, the bitterness and the flavor does, does stay throughout. I know with some of the, the more well-known kind of generic, if you will, more mass produced, um, you know, pilsners and, and and lighter, lighter varieties of any kind of beer. Um, one of the common, you know, uh, shortfalls, I guess, is that you might get some flavor up front, but then it's just completely gone. And, and yep. so I feel like the bitterness stays around, yep. uh, around a bit throughout it. So yep. they definitely did a great job with that. And um, I think that's probably pretty pretty tough to do because you're trying to keep a clean flavor, uh, but still keep you know a good strong flavor throughout mm-hmm. and i know um lagers and, and lighter beers are, are can be notoriously hard to brew for those yes races. there's nothing yes. to cover up and so you a lot of times either it either tastes like nothing or it or it has flavor up front but not throughout and i think yeah. they did a pretty good job yeah. with with having with with making something that that's still very flavorful mm-hmm. um despite having those delicate flavors so mm-hmm. Definitely a, a good winner. And, yep. Uh, I guess uh, unless you have something. No, I think I'm all set. All right. Um, so we'll we'll cut out here in a second, and uh, but we'll we'll be right back with the with the Hellas, and mm-hmm. we'll let you know how that stacks up in comparison. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're back after that tasting, and our next beer up here is um, another shilling, of course, as we mentioned. This is the Paulus, which is a Munich style. Hellas, uh, that'd be a South German Munich beer, and the whole, uh, not the whole deal, but part of the, the, the thing about Hellas is it's a German word hell, which means bright, light, or pale, and they tend to be um, more on the sweet side. Um, we were kind of on the bitter earthy side with, with the last one, uh, picking a German style Pilsner, so we'll kind of see how they compare, although it'll still be uh, pretty light, I'm sure. Um, probably fairly clear and um we're pretty impressed so far with the with with shillings offerings in this european style so we're we're also kind of commenting off camera that it's kind of a shame in some ways that we don't see more uh german and european style um beers in the craft beer world a lot of times we see a lot of ipas and porters and things that lend themselves to a lot of strong flavors and experimentation um 
but one of the things we were commenting on is that it seems like this is a really could be a really good entry point uh, for a lot of you know good beer fans that are non craft beer fans per se. If you've had a uh, you know and if you happen to drink Amstel or or what have you, and you have some some decent taste buds, mm-hmm. it's a uh, you know there's no overly off putting flavors to really. Um, get in the way to, to kind of step people into craft beer so hopefully we see more of this but Schilling's definitely uh leading the way a little bit i guess uh, mm-hmm. in our area anyways mm-hmm. and um one thing i noticed right off the bat is we do have a bit more carbonation and and had it set them down a little bit but i'd say that's probably a little more than the than the pilsner that yeah. we just had yeah i think it's the clearest beer we've had uh today absolutely cheers cheers or prost prost sorry Hmm. It's a very sweet, almost, almost a little bit of like a corn flavor, something yeah. to it. Um, definitely not as much of that bitterness. Uh, mm. Very light, very bright. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's a it's a beer style I enjoy. Yes. A, a quite quite immensely. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. No, it's very good. Um, you know, it's one of the thing where it sometimes I feel on the really. Um, you know, good versions of, of this a lot of times. It almost, it the the sweetness almost kind of takes on sort of like a honey type of mm-hmm. note. Um, and again, this one where I feel like it's um, maybe not quite that sweet, but again, maybe, um, but definitely, definitely a very, you know, there's not a whole lot of hop bitterness there. Absolutely, yeah. So an, another, another pretty solid, contender here i think um not contender we're not doing competition but mm-hmm. another really strong option i guess mm-hmm. um i'd say in terms of you know if you're if you're a little less of a fan of, of the bitterness and you just like some really really clean beers yeah and ales is definitely something worth worth checking out um and we were just talking a second ago of course yeah. about about intro beers to the to the craft beer world yeah. and i'd say you know this is a solid it's a solid step up from something that's still very light, very refreshing, very, mm-hmm. very drinkable, but actually has flavor to it. I know yeah. a lot of our, uh, you know, American beers, um, you know, your traditional mass-produced domestics are, you know, have that very, they're, they're set up that way on purpose, right? Very light, very clean, they, mm-hmm. you know, no offensive flavors and, and very refreshing for a nice summer day or what have you. And I think this does a lot of those things while still having an actual flavor to it <laughs> yes yeah 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 it's something it's you know it's it's approachable but it's not like a lot of um you know uh macro mass-produced beers where it's they tend to get very watery and this is still definitely it's very you know approachable and sweet but it's still you know it's still obviously you're drinking drinking a beer yeah not not drinking something that pretends to be a, an excuse for a beer not to bag on them too too much right. but <laughs> yeah. but certainly a lot of a lot of good flavors here a lot of nice sweet flavors and then mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. it's very refreshing and i think they did a, another good job here so um I'm, yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to maybe doing the whole shilling lineup at some yeah. point i guess because yeah. uh, yeah. i'm pretty impressed so far yeah the aroma is really good too very clean and um, you get the sweetness coming through and the aroma as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one thing, one thing we're kind of chatting about a little bit is, is it's tough sometimes to, uh, you know, it it really is can be tough to I'm sure to brew a very clean beer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably easier in some ways to mask, you know, you know some mistakes with with some some strong flavors and some out there stuff not that every ipa or porter is making mistakes that's not what i mean yeah um but to to have a, a very clean beer that then still has a flavor throughout it is um is probably a, a little more it, it's probably a bit of a challenge in some ways so mm-hmm. we're used to very clean beers in the in the domestic stuff it's certainly clean but it doesn't also taste like anything or as you right. said still have some really nice flavors right all the way through so mm-hmm. definitely you know a good way to introduce some people to the craft beer world yeah um i don't know if you had anything else you want to mention on this one or shall we just uh 
enjoy them and, and yeah. depart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I guess uh, I guess uh, we're gonna say goodbye. But we we want you all, of course, to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. If there are questions at us. If there's anything you want to see here, absolutely, mm-hmm. let us know. Uh, we're very open to suggestions at this yeah. point. Yeah. And um, of course, as we always say, drink good beer. Yep. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.